Welcome to Center Church, where we stir up the Spirit of God. Please join us for another vigil, our 45th vigil on racial justice next Saturday, January 30th, from 10 to 10.30. Of course, bring your mask or facial covering, a sign, and we all social distance. The virtual annual meeting is delayed and will be held on March 7th. And then again, we say welcome to our time of worship, especially as we will be participating, viewing the children's message and an interview with the siblings who were in Guatemala for 23 years as missionaries. Welcome. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus passes the Sea of Galilee and he sees some fishermen and he calls to them and he says, drop what you're doing right now. Come with me, drop your nets, drop your lines, drop your hooks and follow me and help me to spread the good news. And they do, they listen and they, they stop their work and they turn to a different kind of work, the work of spreading the good news that Jesus wants to tell everyone. And I think that we have also been captured by these fishers of people this week with the National Youth Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman, who read at the inauguration. In her words um, on Wednesday, we are striving to forge purpose to compose a commitment to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of all people. Amanda Gorman also said, scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. We are bruised but whole, she said, benevolent but bold. We are fierce and free. 
When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. Amanda Gorman was talking about our country. And, but I think these words can apply to us as fishers of people who are called by, by Jesus right now to drop what we're doing and to not, and to be a flame in that belief and to be unafraid as followers of Jesus's teachings of love, to love ourselves and to love all others and to be a flame in that love and to be unafraid of Jesus demanding of us to drop what we're doing right now and to act in the love of Christ. I'm not sure why I brought my facial mask up here uh, for this segment, but this is our segment for joys and concerns. We invite you to take a look at our prayer list where you will see many people who remain on the list because they are facing a longer recovery. Bobby A is improving daily. As COVID persists, may we persist in keeping safe and supporting the frontliners and essential workers. And may we rally around unity, diversity, and bipartisanship in the new government. Let us pray. You catch us off guard, loving one, blanketing our fields with unsuspecting snow and sending the moon rays down to make a shadow. You catch us off guard when a 22-year-old young poet laureate dances using her fingers, rapping with melody, painting imagery of hardship, weaving it into hope and unity during the inauguration. We are grateful for these surprises. We are grateful when healing occurs. We are grateful that a peaceful transition occurred between presidents. For all those waiting for the vaccine, waiting for some companionship, waiting for a glimmer of joy or fun, shower us with patience, shower us with a sense of delayed gratification. And globally, may Israel learn to respect Palestinian land and ways. May we all, may all of us lean in to listen to another story. And our prayers are with those who died and were wounded in the suicide bombing in Baghdad. Now hear us in our time of silence. And together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture is about Jesus calling his disciples, and it's from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. 
After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Passing along the beach of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. Fishing was their regular work. Jesus said to them, Come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask any questions. They just dropped their nets and followed. A dozen yards or so down the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in their boat mending their fish nets. Right off, he made them the same offer. Immediately, they left their father Zebedee, the boat, the hired hands, and followed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for his marvelous word. Time's up, said Congress, when approving the 14th Amendment, the right for African Black men to vote in 1870 with certain stipulations. Time's up said white women in 1920 to be able to vote. Time's up when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. President Franklin Roosevelt delivered a speech and Congress voted to declare war. It wasn't until 1965 when black women could vote after passing the Voters Rights Act. That's what I call a delayed time's up. Time's up when the Cuyahoga River caught on fire for the 13th time in 1969 due to the pathogens and in oil debris. It's time, they said, to shed the river of pollutants and talk business to the corporations. Today, on January 24th, I ask, time's up for what? Time's up for what? I love the message's translation of Jesus calling forth his disciples. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe in my message. Time's up doesn't always have to be about social change. Yes, it is true. This past week, we experienced a time's up election and a time's up of historical firsts in the inauguration. But time's up could be about you needing, wanting to clean house of personal failures. Time's up could be that it is time to address our health. Time's up could be to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Time's up could be a reminder of you and me to find purpose in our lives. In the inaugural poem, The Hill We Climb, young and talented Amanda Gorman reminds us that we are striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. Jesus didn't seek the most pious or the most righteous or the most influential people of Galilee, but he sought out people like you and me, even you and me. Remember the heads up, seven up game we would play in the classroom on a rainy day? At least I played it often because it rained a lot in Michigan. All were expected to lay 
their heads down like this on our desks and keep them there and close our eyes. And then seven of our classmates would walk around quietly and tag somebody on the head. And if we were tagged, we'd raise up our hand. Then after the seven people were tapped, the teacher would say, heads up. If you were tagged, you had to guess who tagged you. If you guessed right, you would switch places with that person. Talk about fun. It's as fun as playing candy land or shoots and ladders. Well, after playing for a year or two year, I learned to cheat. Looking from underneath my arm, under my elbow, to see if I could spot somebody's pant leg. You don't want to play this game with me. So Jesus isn't asking us to cheat, but to be real. Jesus is tagging you and me. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe in the message. There is no possibility of cheating here. However, this is where our lethargy or lack of direction gets in our way. Now, please do not feel guilt or shame if you don't know in what direction God is leading you. But listen, listen to Jesus' words, follow me. Follow me is a perplexing message. How do we follow? We listen to our heart. We listen to our body. We listen to our soul. Anna and Don Sibley listened to all the above when they headed for Guatemala for 23 years as missionaries from 1968 to 1968. 91. If you can recall, those were particularly hard times. They heard the call to change their lives and believe in Jesus's message of justice. They also heard times up when three youth from the Guatemalan church were murdered by the military. Time's up. It was time to return to stateside. Time's up as a directive is for us to follow or for us to change directions. Why not begin now? Time's up. Amen. We're here with Don Sibley and in a little bit, Anna Sibley. And um, I sought to interview them because of their fascinating work as missionaries. But I have to be rather personal here. Um, both Wayne Cowan and the Sibleys, without them knowing, really helped trigger the reason why I entered the seminary. So um, they mean so much to me. So first off, Don, where did you go as a missionary and who sent you and for what reason? Um, I grew up in a Presbyterian minister's family. So when I met um, my wife, Anna, um, and we got to know each other and got married, we were of a similar interest in serving through the church somewhere and I persuaded her to 
uh, ask the Presbyterian, the United Presbyterian Church, if we could be missionaries and not uh, in the spiritual or ministerial way of doing it so much as um, teaching people or helping them improve their lives in some way by health or in their farming. Why were you and Anna considered the first? The Presbyterian minister, well, the Presbyterian missionaries who went before us to Guatemala started their own programs. Uh, they did not have uh, Guatemalan leaders in the church be their bosses, but when we went, it was a considered a different day and no longer thought to be wise for foreigners to come into a country and start new programs in the church already established. So we were glad to work under some leaders of the Presbyterian Church there. Now we have Anna Sibley. And we were in, uh, we settled in Quesaltenango, which was in the highlands. We made ourselves at home there. They had a house for us, and we became a part of the church mm -hmm. there. And uh, I want to mention a way that I learned something from the farmers of Guatemala, which is fascinating because I went to Cornell Ag School and did not learn this, but the Mayans taught me. <clears throat> they grow things all, it looks to us like a mess of things. Corn is the big crop and they grow one or two types of beans growing up in the corn stalk and of course out of Cornell you want to separate all of those things so that you can spray them with the uh, appropriate insect control, weed control um, chemicals and the Mayans didn't do that and a few years after we got there we began to get some uh, information back from Cornell Ag School. We are starting on a new thing and it was sort of like their idea. It's called intercropping. That if you don't have a huge farm, you can grow things together. And of course, the beans actually fix nitrogen from the air and make a natural chemical fertilizer in the soil so so the Mayans were ahead of the United States they were and they did um, they they went up into the woods and got a topsoil and brought it down and uh, <clears throat> made composting uh, and they weren't very much into chemical fertilizers we almost started to try to persuade them, but remember this was way back in the late 50s uh, and encouraged them to <clears throat> use some fertilizer and we soon tried to get out of that. Mm -hmm. I felt as though I became part of the community. They welcomed us. Uh, did not find us strange. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the first things they did is, in a way, it's like a child with her doll. They loved to dress me <laughs> in the Guatemalan clothes. So, uh, I was happy to wear them. 
you raised your family for the most part, in a large part, there in Guatemala. What were the joys or challenges? Yes, uh, probably one of the biggest challenge is education because Guatemala is on a, a different calendar system. We finally switched to what they call an inter-American school, which was started by missionaries in Spanish, allowed uh, Guatemalan uh, kids to attend it. And uh, the problem was it was strongly controlled by some very conservative people and did not like to allow anybody to speak any Spanish in the school. And our kids fought that. Was there a favorite meal that you like to prepare that's Guatemalan or Mayan? Black beans. <laughs> black beans and what else? Corn. Mmm. They grew corn. The food, um, we enjoyed going to the market um, and that was sort of my job. And we, uh, another job was just how to feed the kids bring up the kids, learn a different language. And the way to do that was to hire a young gal who came to us when she was 15, no, 14. Her name was Stella Martinez. And she stayed with us all the time and uh, actually our granddaughter here is named after her and her daughter is almost like our daughter. And the other day, maybe a month ago, her daughter, who's been married a while, called us and said, you are the first people to know that I am about three months pregnant. <laughs> oh. You've made a lot of close connections and you've remained connected. We, I think we felt very much at home and they made us feel at home, the Guatemalans. That is a great, important result of our going to Guatemala. I won't say that we had any great successes in improving the farming, improving even the attitudes of people to work together. There's a lot of racism down there with the Mayans being the most poor, but a lot of Hispanic poor farmers too. There's a lot of social class um, discrimination, and uh, I wanted to end, maybe, uh, at least mention one positive thing, that the Guatemalan Mayans, who are a very large portion of the society of Guatemala, have over the years learned to stand up uh, for themselves, be proud of who they are, learn more and more, and struggle for doing it, and now are um, happy people, family, life, uh, struggling for life. That's a great way to end. Thank you so much, Don. And Thank you for the opportunity, Lori. Mm -hmm. While there are many strategies to piece together a jigsaw puzzle, there is only one way the completed puzzle is meant to look like. There are many ways to give, many reasons to give, 
and many outcomes from giving. But I find it all stems from one heart. Your heart, my heart, collectively. Please consider sharing your heart.
God blesses us to follow Jesus. God blesses us all with ingenuity. God blesses us with courage. God blesses us with gifts that we all can use. God blesses us with love. Go in peace. Be safe. Amen.